here's where we were. This was the last example that we did. You don't have to get it out. I'm just going to say something about it and then we'll move on. Um, the way, you know, I, sh I shouldn't have said anything. Now I'm really going to hear myself. The, uh, when we say this, we don't necessarily have to. The way I wrote it out here, I realized kind of, it was one of those things that I realized after y'all left. It's not wrong. It's just that I don't have to write all of this because if the limit from the left equals the limit from the right, then the limit overall exists, right? So we could have just said the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x instead of writing both of those. But it's the same thing either way. So I'll just let you know. Because I'm going to, when we write on the next part what our actual, you know, the, like the definition is of it, it doesn't look exactly like that. So I didn't want you to be confused. And let's see. I probably don't need my notes from back here, but I'm going to grab them. Just I always want to make sure that I'm saying everything I intended to say. How am I such a mess? Okay, page 28, when we're done. The definition of continuity looks something like this, right? And let's see, F is, now that looks like fizz. F is continuous if and only if Remember the things that had to be true for it to be continuous? Go ahead. Does the point itself have to exist? Remember this, we talked about continuity. If I have this right here, and this is at some x value, then does the limit from the left and right exist? Yes, but is this continuous? No. So the point has to exist as well, right? So first thing is, oh. F is continuous, and I should have said, at x equals c. That's what goes right there. This is why I, I went and got my paper and I didn't even look at it. So F is continuous at x equals c, whatever x value we're talking about. If and only if F of c exists, So not only does the point have to exist, but the limit coming from either direction has to exist, which means just the limit overall. The limit as x approaches c of f of x exists. So point exists, limit exists, the two are equal. So the third thing is that the limit as x approaches c of f of x has to equal f of c. So really, the three easy things. The point exists, the limit exists, the point and the limit are equal. That's what we're looking at, okay? Three parts, every single time. So this first one tells us to prove that f is discontinuous. So let's do this one together. And then I'm going to send you to the board to actually use the continuity because this one's kind of, it's backwards. I mean, I think you can figure it out as well, but we'll do it together anyway. So it says, prove that the function f is discontinuous at x equals 2 if a equals negative 4. All right, well, so is f continuous at x equals 2? No, because it tells me to prove that it's discontinuous, and they're not going to tell me to prove that it's discontinuous if it's continuous. So I look at this. So the first thing we look at for continuity, like even if we're trying to figure out whether it is or not, at x equals 2, it's always going to be at wherever the split is in the um, piecewise function. So I want f of 2. If I want f of 2, I substitute that in where? Well, nowhere really, but I use the second one. So what's my answer? 1. Okay. So then I do the limit. And I have to do it from the left and the right. The limit is x approaches 2 from the left of f of x. And since this is everywhere that it is except for when it's 2, then I'll use that for the left and the right, right? So when I substitute the 2 in here, it tells me that a is negative 4. So I'm going to get negative 4 times 2 
plus 7, which gives me negative 1. Okay. So then the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x equals, same thing, right, negative 4 times 2 plus 7. And you could actually skip that part and just say negative 1 there. That works. So what this tells me, right, even if you think you already know the answer, and that's fine, but just talking about this. Since it's the left and the right, and it equals negative 1, then this tells me right here that the limit as x approaches 2, just in general, of f of x equals negative 1. If the if they were different, then what would be true about this limit? Doesn't exist. Okay, so let's look at our continuity. The point exists. F of two is one. The limit exists, but are the point and the limit equal? No. And so I can say it. I can say that the limit as x approaches two of f of x does not equal f of 2. And then we're going to use a little notation here, because I said this backwards of the other kind, like I was the other day. I was saying blah, 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 continuous because, right? And then I said this the opposite way. And so I would just want you to know you could say it either way and you could see it either way. So I'm using my justification first instead of the, as a because. So when I say this, I can say the limit is not equal to the point, and then these three little dots, anybody know what that means? Nope, anybody? It's okay if you don't, but it helps you not have to write things out. This right here just means therefore. So maybe you've seen it before. Have you seen anything like that before? It means therefore. Just three little dots and a little triangle means therefore. So the limit of as x approaches 2 of f of x is not equal f of 2. Therefore, I can say f of x is not continuous or discontinuous, however you want to say it. And then I have to be very careful about what I put. You're pretty much just rewrite what is there. I can't just say it's not continuous because it's continuous some places, right? It's not continuous at x equals 2 if a equals negative 4. Because if a is something else, then it could be true, right? Does that make sense to you? So I, I could have said, f of x is not continuous at x equals 2 if a equals negative 4 because of this, or I can say this and then therefore. And really, it doesn't matter. One's not better than the other. Um, I sometimes, I think most of mine, it ends up with the because, because in my brain, I just, this part comes out first, because I feel like I'm answering the question and then giving my reason. But if you happen to put the other part down, you can make it into a therefore, either way. It's totally fine. As long as you say everything that needs to be said. Okay, are we good so far? Awesome. I think the most difficult part for most of you, if any of it is difficult, is really going to be not so much the arithmetic and stuff. Well, really, the hardest part about a lot of what we do is the algebra that's inside of it, and that's where the mistakes are made. But you're going to understand the calculus and what you're supposed to do, but not the. But what you might struggle with the most is just getting the right words down in your explanation. Okay, so we have to be very specific. We have to think about what we're really saying. Um, about what's going on here. Okay, so it says to use the definition of continuity. So if it tells me that, okay, it's not always going to straight out and tell you that, but if it does, that means I got to have the point exists, the limit exists, they're equal, right? So I'm going to use it to find k so that f will be continuous at x equals 2. All right, so that means that I need f of 2, and I can figure that out. That is going to be what? 5, okay? Then I'm going to need the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x and the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. Okay. So as I come from the left, I would use the first one and I get 5, right? As I come from the right, I use the second one, and that would give me 2k plus 6. You all good with that? So what we need, we know that the point exists. The limit from the left matches that one, so that's good, right? But then I need for the limit overall to exist, I need these two to be the same. 
So I need to do 5 equals 2k plus 6. That's going to give me negative 1 equals 2k, and then k equals negative 1 half. Now, let me ask you this. Does k always equal negative 1 half? No, only when you set those two equal to each other, right? So really, I can substitute in any point for k, or any number for k. But if I substitute in negative 1 half, then the limit from the left equals the limit from the right, right? So it's not that, you know, we're not guaranteed that k always equals negative 1 half. So when we say this, we can say when, when, because we figured out that 1, and it did ask us to find k, so when k is equal to negative 1 half, so when that's true, the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is equal to f of 2, which is equal to 5, okay? And what I'm looking for, I want to say that, so all this is true over there, and, and since that's happening, f will be continuous at x equals 2, so I can say, therefore, f is continuous at x equals 2. Do you think that's enough? Is x, I'm sorry, is f always continuous at x equals 2? No, only when. When k equals negative 1 half. f is continuous at x equals 2 when k equals negative 1 half. And it may seem a little repetitive, but if you think about what you're actually saying, that k statement has to be in both. Okay, you with me on that? It's better to put a little more. I mean, you don't want to write a whole paragraph of extra stuff, but if you're not sure, just go ahead and say it. So when k equals negative 1 half, the, everything works to be continuous. Therefore, it's continuous at x equals 2 when k is equal to negative 1 half. We okay with that? So I think we all got negative 1 half, but the explanation, I think, was there. And again, you could say it opposite. It just kind of depends on how you want to do that. All right, so now this one took you a little bit more here. Now, and I also want to point out, because these pieces, both of these are linear here, the only place it could be discontinuous would be at the break. Same thing here. The only places it could be discontinuous, on this one there would be two. It could be discontinuous at negative three, or it could be at one, or maybe it's continuous. But this tells us to use the definition to find A and B so that it will be continuous everywhere given, okay? Which technically means everywhere. So we're going to do the same type of thing. I'm going to find f of negative 3, so f of negative 3, that means I would substitute it in there, and it's just negative 17. And then I also need f of 1, and f of 1 would be a plus b. Can you agree with that? Okay. So then, let's look at our limits. So the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left of f of x, and I need the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right of f of x. Okay, so from the left, that's the numbers that are smaller than negative 3, so that would be negative 17. And from the right, that would be these here. So I would have negative 3a plus b. You agree with that when I substitute that in? Okay. And what do we want to be true about these two? From the left and from the right? Equal. So negative 3a plus b needs to equal negative 17. Well, I have two variables, right? But I also have another set of limits that I can use, so I'm just going to pause on that right now. And I'm going to go to my other limits. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x, and the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x. So from the left, that'll just be what, a plus b? And from the right, it would be 3. We agree with that? So here, again, I want these two to be equal. So I have a plus b equals 3. 
You have two equations and two variables. Anybody know what it's called? System of equations. Is this a crazy hard one? No, it really is not. Um, it is not that bad at all. Uh, you could do substitution or you could do elimination. What do you want to do? Somebody give me an option. Substitution. <laughs> okay, raise your hand for substitution. Raise your hand for elimination. All right, why don't y'all just do it on your own and find an A or B, however you want to find it. <laughs> this one is set up nicely for elimination, but if substitution is your go-to, that's fine too. But you find A and B, because you know how to do this. I did elimination. If you're doing substitution, it'll look different. It's fine. Well, that could be a problem. Or maybe I'm wrong. Let me check my answers over here. No, mine are correct. Sorry. <laughs> do I need to do it by substitution also? I'll do it by substitution also. Okay. So <laughs> I'll do make this A equals 3 minus B. Oh, I did it the hard way, but whatever. Okay, so negative 3 times 3 minus B plus B equals negative 17. Negative 9 plus 3B plus B equals negative 17. So 4B equals, if I add it over there, I get 8, negative 8. So B equals negative 2. So there you go. I did substitution over here, elimination over here. It makes you feel better. It would have been much easier had I solved for B and not A. I realized that after as I did it, but yeah. So, it, but it doesn't matter. It's not like it's crazy difficult. And I really, I lean more towards substitution most of the time, but this was a super easy one to do elimination. But if elimination is just not your thing in your brain, it's fine. I mean, you can still do it, okay? But it's a very basic system. Are we good on all that? So now, how we explain this, right? Are A and B always 5 and negative 2? No, only when all this stuff is true, right? And we did find here that then once we do all of this, that this limit here is also equal to negative 17. And I know there's not a whole lot of room, but you don't have anything on the back if you need to like fold it up and write stuff. So I should write over here, once I do this, I get 3, right? And then I can say that... Well, I've shown all that stuff, so I don't need to do all that. I think we can say, what do we want to say? We want to say that the limit or when A equals 5 and B equals negative 2, then the limit as X approaches negative 3 of F of X is equal to F of negative 3 which is equal to negative 17. And the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is equal to f of 1, which is equal to 3. Right? Y'all, what did I do? Ant. Ant. Please don't know you're paying attention. That looks like a weird ant, but ant. Okay, so when a is equal to 5 and b equals negative 2, the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 equals f of negative 3, which equals negative 17. And since there were two places we had to say, we had to talk about both of them because it was asking about everything, then I can say, therefore, when a equals 5 and b equals negative 2, f is continuous at x equals 
negative 3, and x equals 1. Okay, we good with that? Yes, sir. You could have said, so these, this is everywhere given because there's only two. But you could have said when blah, 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 f is continuous everywhere given. Like instead, you could have said that everywhere given instead of this part, but the rest of it has to be there. So we start this knowing that it's continuous, right? Because it says prove that it's continuous. All of this stuff has to be here. Well, not necessarily all of it. I mean, you could have skipped some steps in the substitution or whatever. But, um, and then this whole explanation. Okay, and it's gonna it's gonna be rough going sometimes for some of us, but just remember to make sure you're restating what's in the question and think about what you really have to say. Okay, and it'll get better, I promise. You're not used to having to do that a ton, so it'll get better, I promise. We good on that? Any questions at all? Okay, so you have some time left. Well, you only have about five minutes left, but um, you can go ahead and get into AP Classroom.